What's the purpose of a refeed day, a diet break? Why choose one over the other? So we're going to break this up into two quick answers. So the purpose of a refeed and then the purpose of a diet break. The purpose of a refeed is simple. A refeed day is going to be one day where it's kind of like a cheat meal. So more than anything, it's just a psychological break from dieting. 24 hours of increased calories, meaning you can have one, I like the word free meal or reward meal better than cheat meal because I don't think you're cheating on anything at this point. Um, Cheating implies that it's negative or something bad or you're failing. That's not the case here. If you take one free meal, you're probably going to bump your calories up quite a bit and it ends up being a refeed day because you hit your daily caloric intake at a higher amount. That's the purpose of a refeed day. So a a single day refeed day serves two main purposes. Number one, it's a psychological break from the diet and number two, it's a glycogen replenishment day. This is basically a day where we have more carbohydrates. We can fuel our muscle glycogen a little bit more. We're probably going to recover a little bit better, probably going to get a better pump for the next few days in the gym and we're probably going to have some better performance, possibly hit some PRs. During the diet, this is important. It just gives us a mental break and it allows us to adhere to the diet for a longer period of time. And in a good fat loss structure, that refeed day is included in that individual's weekly caloric intake, which means that even with that higher calorie day, their weekly caloric total balance is still in a deficit. So they're still going to lead to fat loss results even with that higher calorie day. That's the purpose of a refeed day. A diet break is when we take that refeed and we make it more than one day. So at least two days is what I would consider a diet break. Usually that's called just a multi-day refeed, uh, but we're going to call it a diet break in this sense. A diet break is two to 14 days. So you can do two days, three days, four days, a full week, two full weeks, depending on the person, depending on how long they've been dieting. But this is a period of time where we bring calories up to maintenance level our new maintenance, I might add, because as we diet and our metabolism adapts, that maintenance lowers. So you might not want to go to your maintenance calories from 12 weeks ago when you started the diet. You probably want to estimate what your calorie uh, caloric maintenance is right now after being in the diet for 12 weeks and start there. But a diet break is basically where we bring our calories up via carbohydrates. The reason we bring them up via carbohydrates is because A, it helps replenish that muscle glycogen that I just spoke of a little bit better. Obviously, fats are not going to get stored as muscle glycogen, Um, and B, they are less likely to store as fat. There's a lot of science and studies that show, I mean, fat is fat, so it's easier to get stored as fat. It doesn't mean all fat gets stored as fat because there's a lot of hormonal and neurological processes that the body needs fat to fuel. However, if we have an excess amount of calories and it's depending on whether we store carbs or fat as body fat, your body's going to take fat and store that as fat. It just is easier to do so for it. It's more efficient. It's a faster process. So it's going to do that more likely. Carbohydrates, on the other hand, are more likely to get stored as muscle glycogen because we can use that for performance later on. And the brain's first and primary fuel source is glucose. That's carbohydrates. It's not ketones like all these ketone supplements might make you believe. That only happens when we completely deplete our system of carbohydrates, aka glucose. So when the brain has nothing left to take from for fuel, it will then take fat and make ketones out of it for fuel. But in any other scenario, it's going to take glucose, which is carbohydrates. So a diet break is a day, back to the whole point here, diet break is a day where we bring up calories via carbohydrates in order to basically have a hormonal insurance of policy is the way I like to look at it. It's kind of like our safety net. We bring our calories up to maintenance. That's going to facilitate ghrelin, leptin, metabolism, testosterone, thyroid, all these different hormones that do get depleted and actually start to decline and diminish as we go further and further into a deficit. Deficit, um, as far as the timeline goes. So the longer we're in a deficit, the more hormones start to take a hit. When we take a diet break, which is a minimum of 48 hours, and this has been documented in studies, basically showing at least 48 hours of at maintenance calories is needed to elicit change within these hormones. So that one day refeed, the reason I said it's only there for muscle glycogen and psychological benefit or stress relief is simply because it's not long enough to elicit changes within our hormonal profile. 
Therefore, we need at least 48 hours. Now, if you've been dieting 12 weeks straight, we're probably going to take seven full days because the longer we stay at maintenance, the more likely we're going to replenish all of our muscle glycogen, fuel better recovery, and actually eliminate these stressed out hormones um, and let them adapt in a positive way. So, the difference between a refeed and a diet break is simple. A refeed day is one day, and the main benefits are muscle glycogen and psychological benefit. And a diet break is at least 48 hours, two days, but all the way up to 14 days, depending on how long you've been in a deficit. And the main purpose there is to replenish hormones, to fuel performance, to make sure that we're resetting or readapting our metabolism in a positive way. The way you know what to choose for you personally is basically on the length of your diet. If you're jumping into a diet tomorrow and you've been in it for seven days, you don't need a diet break. You haven't stressed the body for long enough. For you, you probably just need one refeed day. So if you're going into this diet phase, the best thing for you to do is to actually just have one refeed day per week as a mental break and as a muscle glycogen replenishment if you plan on doing this for the long run and if that will help you adhere to it. Some people do better without a refeed day and that's totally fine because if fat loss is your main goal, we just need to attack a deficit and that's really all that matters here. But in the cases that you've been dieting for four plus weeks, you might want to integrate a diet break every once in a while. If you're very focused on muscle perseverance, hormonal balance, and strength and performance, you might want to add in a diet break every fourth or fifth week. So you have three or four weeks of hard dieting and then you have one week of just relaxing and bringing calories up via carbohydrates. And that's basically how you determine which is better for you between a refeed and a diet break. 